Good morning. I am Dr. Narend Verma, Assistant Professor, Department of Geography, Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi. And today I am going to discuss on Plane Table Survey. The main learning objectives of this lesson are meaning of surveying, types of surveying, plane table survey, instruments used in plane table survey, methods of plane table surveying, advantages and disadvantages of plane table survey. Now what is surveying? It is the art to determine the relative position of points on above or beneath the surface of the earth with respect to each other by measurements of horizontal and vertical distances, angles and directions. It is done with the purpose of determining the dimensions of the part of earth's surface to prepare a plan or map, establish boundaries on land, measure area and volume and site selection for engineering purposes. Now in this slide, we have shown the different aspects, that is the horizontal direction, ED, vertical distance, that is height, CD, and line of sight, that is angle of elevation or angular distance. Now what are the different types of survey? We can classify surveying on different bases. First, based on purpose of survey, we have engineering survey, Defense Survey, Geological Survey, Geographical Survey, Reconnaissance Survey, and Route Survey. Then, based on place of survey, survey can be classified as Land Survey, it includes Topographical Survey, Cadastral Survey, City Survey, etc. Then, Hydrographical Survey, Underground Survey, and Aerial Survey. Then based on instruments used, survey can be classified as chain and tape survey, plane table survey, prismatic compass survey, theodolite survey, and total station. Now what is plane table survey? Plane table survey is a graphical method of surveying in which the field work and plotting are done simultaneously on the ground. Plane table survey is different from other instrumental surveys like prismatic compass or chain and tape survey wherein the surveyor records only the position of the objects on the ground in a logbook and the map or the plan is prepared by plotting the surveyed objects in the lab on a suitable scale. Whereas in plane table survey, the location of the objects and their plotting on the map is done on the ground itself. Now what are the instruments used in plane table survey? The main instruments include drawing board. It is a flat wooden board made of pine wood and having 1500 by 1000 or 1000 by 700 or 700 by 500 or 500 by 350 millimeters dimensions. At the bottom of the board is a circular aluminium or copper plate called the pivot plate which is used for fixing it on the tripod. It is used for mounting the drawing sheet on which the map or plan is prepared. Next is tripod. It is a three-legged stand 1.5 meters in height. It is used for mounting the drawing board. Then we have the elided. It is a wooden or brass ruler, 50 to 60 centimeters in length. It is used for sighting the objects and plotting them on the map on a reduced scale based on the RF taken. The elided has an object vane and a sight vane at its hinge ends for sighting the objects. Then we have the spirit level. It is a wooden or iron device consisting of a sealed glass tube partially filled with alcohol or other liquid containing an air bubble. It is used for leveling the table. Trough compass. 
It is a magnetic compass used for orienting the table towards magnetic north. Arrows. These are thin iron rods used for marking the ground position of the survey or plotting station taken on the drawing sheet on the table. Plumping bob. It is a hairpin shaped brass frame having two arms of equal length with a plumb bob attached with a thread at one end. It is used for centering the table during survey. Ranging rod. These are rods usually three centimeters in diameter and two to three meters in length. They are painted alternately, either red and white or black and white in lengths of 20 centimeters. Sometimes a flag is also attached on the top they are used either for sighting distant objects or marking alternate survey stations on the ground. Measuring tape. It is a metallic tape having either 30 meters or 50 meters tape length for measuring distance of objects on the ground. And finally, the drawing sheet. It is a plain drawing sheet for preparing the plan or map. Now in this slide, we have shown the different instruments that are used in plane table surveying. We have the drawing board, the tripod stand, elidade, ranging rod, uh, spirit level, trough compass, plumbing fork or plumbing bob, arrows and measuring tape. Let us now discuss basic operations in plane table survey. The basic operations include selection of area and preparation of reconnaissance map, selection of survey station, leveling, centering, marking of north and orientation of the table. Before beginning any survey, the surveyor has to first select the area to be surveyed and he prepares a reconnaissance map. It contains all the objects to be included in the map or the plan. Next is selection of the survey station. While selecting a survey station, it is to be kept in mind that the survey station has to be at such a point that all the objects to be surveyed are clearly visible from the survey station. And also, the survey station has to be on a ground which has got minimum undulations. After the selection of the survey station is the process of setting up the table. This includes leveling, centering, marking of north and orientation of the table. Now what is leveling? It is the process of bringing the plane table in a horizontal plane to the ground with the help of spirit level. To achieve it, the spirit level is kept along the four corners of the table diagonally and the legs of the table are moved front and back or sideways so that the air bubble in the spirit level lies exactly in the center. Once it is done for all the corners, the table becomes leveled. The second is centering. After leveling, we come to the process of centering it is the process of determining the exact ground position of the plotting station. It is done with the help of plumb bob. For this, the pointed arm of the plumbing fork is kept at the plotting station on the sheet and the other arm is extended below with plumb bob suspended towards the ground. The point on the ground exactly below the tip of bob is the ground position of the plotting station. Next is determining the north. This is done with the help of trough compass. It is done either by rotating the table or by rotating the trough compass until the needle points exactly towards north. The next process is the process of orientation of the table. It is the process by which the position occupied by the board at various survey stations are kept parallel to the previous survey stations. It is done when the surveyor moves 
from one survey station to the next survey station for continuing the survey. It is necessary, otherwise, the lines drawn on paper will not represent the same lines on the field. There are two methods of orientation. First, orientation by trough compass, and second, orientation by back sighting. Now, in orientation by magnetic compass, in this method, the trough compass is placed along north line marked at previous station and table is rotated until the needle exactly points towards north at the new station. However, this method is prone to errors due to variations of magnetic fields. Next is orientation by back sighting. This is more reliable method. In this method, the plane table is set at new station and elidate is placed along the baseline drawn from the previous station. The table is then rotated until the line of sight bisects the previous station. Now in this slide, we have shown the process of orientation back by back sighting. Here you can see the table is placed at B station and a ranging rod is kept at station A. The LED is placed along the baseline AB and the table is rotated until the ranging rod is clearly visible from station B. Once it is visible, the table is clamped and the process of orientation is completed. Now we come to the different methods of plane table surveying. There are broadly three methods of plane table surveying. First, radiation method, intersection method, and traversing. Now, radiation method. This is the simplest method. In this method, the map or plan is prepared by plotting the objects with the help of rays drawn from a single survey station on the ground. The distance of the surveyed objects is reduced to suitable scale after its actual measurement on the ground. The method is suitable for preparing plan of small areas where all the objects to be surveyed are clearly visible from the selected survey station. Now what is the process of radiation method? First, we select a suitable station on the ground and set the plane table by leveling, centering, and marking the magnetic north. We then place the fiducial edge of the LED along the plotting station P on the drawing sheet and rotate the LED in the direction of the object to be surveyed and observe it through the sighting vane and object vane. Once the sight vane and object vane of the LED are exactly in line with the object, we draw a back ray from the direction of the object towards plotting station. Thereafter, we measure the ground distance of the object with the help of measuring tape and mark the position of the object on the map or plan at reduced distance on the basis of the RF or the scale taken for the purpose. This process is repeated until all the desired objects or points are located and plotted on the map and then the rays drawn are erased. To complete the map, lines are drawn by joining points to show roads and buildings. Various objects plotted are represented with symbols. Legend is prepared. Scale is drawn graphically according to the RF and suitable title is inserted on the top of the map in the direction of north. All the symbols used for representing the objects are aligned in the north direction. Now in this slide, we have shown the radiation method of plane table survey. Here you can see that the table is placed at station P and objects A, B, C, D and E are surrounding the tables that are to be surveyed. By, with the help of the LED, we cite all these objects one by one and draw back rays. 
These are shown by dotted lines on the top of the table. Once these objects are sighted, we take the ground distance of all these objects one by one and then with the help of the reduced scale, we plot their position on the plane table as shown here by points A, B, C, D, E in small letters. The next method is the intersection method. In this method, the map or plan is prepared through the intersection of rays from two survey stations. The position of the objects on the map is determined on the basis of the intersection of the rays drawn from both the stations without the actual measurement of the ground distance of objects. Here, only the baseline between station A and station B is measured accurately and drawn according to scale. Now what is the procedure for intersection method? First, we select station A and station B for survey. The stations are selected in such a manner that all the objects to be surveyed are clearly visible from them. Also, these stations should not form an acute angle with each other so that the rays drawn from both the stations easily intersect each other. Next, we set the table at station A through the processes of leveling, centering and marking of north and visualize station B with the help of Elidade and ranging rod. We then draw a line PQ in the direction of station B on the sheet from station A and measure the actual ground distance between station A and station B and calculate its proportionate distance on the sheet with the help of the RF. This line PQ is the baseline of the map. After measuring the baseline, we observe all the objects from station A and draw back rays with the help of Elidade on the drawing sheet. We then move to station B and set the table at station B through the processes of leveling, centering, and orientation of the table and again visualize the same objects from station B and draw back rays. These back rays intersect the rays drawn from station A at a point. This point of intersection is the position of the objects on the map. We complete the map by joining the different points by representing roads and buildings and show the different features with appropriate symbol. Prepare the legend of the map, draw graphical scale to show the RF, and insert suitable title of the map. Now in this slide, we have shown the plane table survey through the intersection method. Then we have the traversing method. Traversing means to move from one station to another station during a survey. It is usually done when the area to be covered is large. Here, the surveyor, after completing survey at one station, moves to the next station and after aligning with the previous station, conducts the survey. The process is repeated until the area to be surveyed is completely covered. Traversing is of two types, open traverse and closed traverse. In open traverse, the surveyor does not return back to the starting station. It is usually done when the survey is conducted along linear features such as rivers, railway lines, canals, etc. In closed traverse, on the other hand, the surveyor returns back to the initial survey station and the map or the plan is closed. Now let us discuss the advantages and disadvantages of plane table survey. The main advantages are, there is no risk of omitting any detail as surveying and plotting are done simultaneously. Errors can be checked and rectified on the ground itself. It is a simple method of surveying which does not require high technical skills. It is also useful in those areas 
where due to local magnetic effect, prismatic compass survey cannot be carried out. Now what are the disadvantages? It is not suitable during wet or inclement weather conditions. Now since the map is prepared on the ground itself, it is difficult to replot the same map on a different scale. And finally, it involves high transportation cost as the equipment used in this survey is heavy and bulky. So let us now look at some of the review questions. First, what is surveying? Then, what is baseline? What essential features have to be kept in mind while selecting a survey station in a plane table survey? What is orientation in a plane table survey? Then, what are the limitations of plane table survey? And these are some of the reference books that can be used for further reading. First is The Principles and Practice of Surveying, Volume 2 by Breed CB. Then Surveying, Volume 1 and 2 by S.K. Dugal. Then Surveying, Volume 1 and 2 by Punmia. And finally, Practical Geography. This is a book in Hindi by J.P. Sharma. Thank you.